Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our monthly web workshop on Fluke Connect. I thought I'd start off the new year with an overview of Fluke Connect. So that is our topic for today. My name is Sean Carta. I am a tier three technical support engineer and the Fluke lead. I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items before I begin the presentation. Phones will be muted during the entire presentation. Please feel free to type questions into the question section of your screen at any time. Please limit your questions to the topic of today's session. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And today's session will be recorded and uploaded to our Fluke Connect website in the next few days. That link to that website is fluke.com backslash quick start under handheld tools and I will show you that link to that website at the end of the presentation. Our agenda or the purpose of this session is really to introduce you to Fluke Connect. So I will start by providing you with the high level overview of Fluke Connect, answer the question what is Fluke Connect, then I will explain how Fluke Connect works. Next I will discuss what Fluke Connect can do for you. And finally, I will answer any questions during the questions and answers section at the end of the presentation. Our first section is a high level overview of Fluke Connect. I just want to cover a few basic facts about Fluke Connect for anyone that may be new to the software. So what is Fluke Connect? At its core, Fluke Connect is a digital clipboard for measurement data taken from select Fluke tools. In other words, it's software that connects to Fluke tools to capture electronic readings and thermal images. And, and while it can do so much more than that, that is the foundation of what it does. So I wanna start there. Here you can see I have the Fluke Connect mobile app on my phone connected to a T3000 FC temperature module. You can see the reading on the tool, 68.0 degrees Fahrenheit, matches the reading in the Fluke Connect mobile app, 68.0 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I'll show you a video of Fluke Connect in action. Don't worry about the sound if you can't hear it, it's, it's just music for the most part, and all of the text you need to see will be on the screen. Thank you. 
So hopefully the video gave you some insight into how Fluke Connect works and how you might be able to use it in your job. Just like Jake, Larry, and Charlie. The next thing that is important for you to know is that Fluke Connect software comes in three different tiers. This is often one of the more confusing aspects of the Fluke Connect software. So here's a quick overview. First, the first tier is Fluke Connect Measurements, which is available to all users for free. This tier enables users to capture measurements from their tools and save the data to the cloud. The second tier, which is the Fluke Connect Assets tier, comes with a one year free trial for users and is $250 per license per person after that. This tier includes all of the features available in the Fluke Connect measurements tier, plus asset management, asset health tracking, and work order management. Finally, we also have the Fluke Connect condition monitoring tier. This is our third tier or the top tier. The first year of the software subscription is included with the purchase of the sensor or hardware. This tier includes all of the features available in the measurements tier, all of the features available in the assets tier, plus remote monitoring capability and alarm notification. The next question you need to know an answer to is where Fluke Connect can be used. And the Fluke Connect software works in three different applications. First, we've got the Fluke Connect mobile app. This is the key interface for capturing measurements from the tools. Next, we've got the Fluke Connect web app. This is where you go to create assets and perform analysis. And finally, we've got the Fluke Connect desktop app. This is the key interface for downloading thermal images and creating thermal image reports, as well as creating basic acoustic reports. You will see how all three of these applications work together when I show you the workflow in the next section of the presentation. And you can use all three of these applications with the free Fluke Connect measurement tier of software too. So the mobile app, the web app, and the desktop app are all available for free and can be used with the free Fluke Connect measurements tier of software. So next, I'll give you a tiny bit of background on how it all started. It started with the tools, the Fluke wireless tools. Fluke started looking at wireless tools way back in 1995 in response to customer requests for safe measurements, remote measurements in difficult locations, efficient measurements that did not require multiple technicians. And around the mid 2010s, Fluke started developing wireless tools that could fulfill customers' needs. Now there are over 80 Fluke Connect enabled tools and every year we keep adding more. Fluke Connect connection to all Fluke Connect tools is a major differentiator between Fluke and other sensor companies. Our Fluke Connect software is part of what sets Fluke apart from some of our competitors. Those 80 different Fluke Connect enabled tools work in 11 different categories, including digital multimeters, clamp meters, installation testers, vibration meters, scope meters, process meters, thermometers, installation testers, infrared cameras, power loggers, power quality monitors, and I, I think I misspoke, it should have been insulation testers in addition to installation testers. The easiest way to tell if a tool will work with Fluke Connect software is if it has the letters FC, Frank Charlie, in the model name. So the 376 FC clamp meter, 1664 FC installation tester, and the T3000 FC temperature module all would be Fluke Connect enabled. The only exception to this rule is uh, the infrared suite of cameras. Most of them do in fact work with Fluke Connect, but do not include the FC in the model name. For example, the TIS-20, the TI-45, etc. 
and the software is available in over 73 different countries. I think we may be up to 76 or 77 by now. That's another thing. We keep adding countries to our list of supported countries every year. So here's the list of Fluke Connect enabled tools for your reference. But remember, any tool with the letters FC in the model name will work with the Fluke Connect software. You can see all the different clamp meters we have, including the newer ones, the 368 and the 369. Um, you can see the digital multimeters, the energy loggers, insulation testers, etc. Our next section is how does Fluke Connect work? I'll start with an overview of how the data flows through the various systems, then I have screenshots to simulate the Fluke Connect workflow. So here's an overall flow of how the data is stored and moved through the various systems. In step number one, let's say you have an intermittent flow or motor problem with a rooftop HVAC package unit. So in step number two, you've grabbed your 376 FC clamp meter to help diagnose the issue, and you connect it to the blower motor. In step number three, the 376 FC clamp meter communicates the readings to the Fluke Connect mobile app here via a Bluetooth connection. Then in step number four, the Fluke Connect mobile app will upload the readings to the Fluke Connect cloud where they are permanently stored. Now, if the cell phone is out of range and has no signal whatsoever, the data will be stored on the phone until it reconnects to either a cell signal or a Wi-Fi signal and can then upload the data from the phone to the Fluke Connect cloud. And finally, last but not least, in step number five, users can then access their Fluke Connect data in the cloud via any web-enabled device, such as a web browser, the mobile app, or our desktop software. Now I'll go through and show you the flow step by step starting with the mobile app. Here's what the mobile app homepage looks like. So after you've downloaded the software to your phone and you've logged into your Fluke Connect account, this is what you're going to see. Next to the number one, you'll see connect and capture measurements. And this area is actually a button. So when you try to connect your Fluke Connect mobile app to your tool, you'll click on this area of the Fluke Connect homepage. Next to the number two, we've got the option for setup logging or monitoring. This area is only available to those with our condition monitoring tier products. Next to the number three, we've got my work orders. This feature enables users to create work orders and assign them to teammates and is available with our Fluke Connect asset tier. You'll notice there are two areas in blue with blue highlighted text here and here. And if you ever have a question about which handheld devices are supported by the Fluke Connect software, you can click on this link and that will take you to that chart you saw a couple of um, screens back that listed off all of the Fluke Connect enabled tools. So when in doubt, log into your mobile app and just click that link. The second link will provide you access to a list of all the condition monitoring products we support. Next, I will cover the three main steps of connecting your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So you can see just how easy it is to do. The first step, log into the Fluke Connect mobile app. Pretty simple and straightforward. You double click on the Fluke Connect icon, you enter your username and your password, and you click the yellow sign in button, and then you'll see the Fluke Connect mobile app homepage. Then you simply set your phone down and move on to your tool. The second step in the process is to pick up your tool, turn on the tool, and press the Fluke Connect button. This is what the Fluke Connect button looks like. So you'll see the little Fluke logo, the Fluke Connect icon logo, with the little fan above it. And once you press that button on the tool display, you'll see a similar looking logo. So that verifies that you have in fact pressed the the Bluetooth button here, the Fluke Connect button on the tool, and it's activated the Bluetooth signal, so it's now broadcasting. The Fluke Connect button will also flash a blue light intermittently to show that it's sending out the signal or the data. The third step in the process is to go back to your mobile phone, click on the capture and 
or connect and capture measurements area of the screen, which is in fact a button. That will provide you with a list of all of the tools that have their Fluke Connect Bluetooth signal activated. In this case, it just happens to be the one tool, the 376 FC clamp meter. So we click on that yellow area, that's a button, and that will provide us a connection from our Fluke Connect mobile app back to the Fluke Connect tool. So here we can see we've got one 376 FC clamp meter connected. The reading we're seeing in the app is negative 0.4, and that matches the reading we're seeing on the tool, which is negative 0.4. At this point, we can record readings in the app using the little red record button. Now, in-app recordings are limited to 10 minutes, but you have the ability to log data on the tool itself for much longer periods of time. So don't forget that you can do data logging using the tool's onboard memory for most Fluke Connect tools instead of using the in-app recording. But that's an option for a quick, quick log file if you want to generate a quick log file. You can also save the reading, which will save the data from your mobile device to the Fluke Connect cloud, where it can be viewed later using in any web-enabled device. Or you can use the Share Live feature, which you saw in the video. Um, the technician, Jake, showed the panel to Charlie, who was out fishing in the river. Um, you, that's the Share Live option. And finally, you can download readings. You also saw Jake do that, where he downloaded the readings and emailed them out to Charlie, or actually he emailed them to Larry, the, the the technician lead. You can email an Excel, CSV, and JPEG. So once you click the save button, this big yellow save button on the reading, it will take a snapshot, snapshot of the data. And from there, you, it will take you the software, the mobile app will take you to this screen. You can see that this is the reading that we just took, 376FC. The date and timestamp is automatically added. The negative 0.4 is the reading. The next thing we can do if we wanted, if we had access to the assets tier of the software, either the free trial version that's available for one year after you create your account, or if you have the paid version, you'll see that the padlock next to the asset is unlocked. So we can assign this data to an asset. So whether in, in our scenario, we're signing it to that rooftop HVAC package unit, but it could be a motor, a chiller, any any kind of asset that you're monitoring. You can track the asset health over time by taking this data and assigning it to the asset. Now, in our phishing video scenario, there was a problem, and Jake mentioned he was going to assign it to a work order. So the reading and the information he took, he would click here to assign it to a work order, and he would probably add a note, maybe the technician's name, Sam, you know, hey, Sam, please please investigate this. I have approval from Charlie for you to go out and, and check on this. He could also add a voice note, an actual recording of what he wants to say. Um, he can share this information, which in the video he did that by sending it via email. And again, he can send it as an Excel file, a CSV, or a JPEG. Now, once he's done with all of that and he wants to save this data to the cloud, he has to click the yellow Save button here in the upper right-hand corner. So, if you remember from our Fluke data flow chart at the beginning of this section, the measurement reading will be saved locally on your mobile phone until it connects to a cell signal or a Wi-Fi wi signal. Then that data will get synced to the Fluke Connect cloud. And this is why the Fluke Connect mobile app even works in elevator shafts or out in oil fields, because the data is stored locally on the phone until it reconnects to a signal, then it's uploaded to, to the cloud. I use the elevator shaft and oil fields as examples because I've talked to customers in both cases. Um, once the data is in the Fluke Connect cloud, you can use the web app to view the same data that's on your phone. So here we see that reading in the mobile app. We see the same reading in the web app. And you can see also that we've got a log file from the 376 and that log file appears in the web app as well. Now keep in mind, this process works for 80 different Fluke Connect enabled tools, not just the 376 FC clamp meter that you're seeing here. And again, everything you're seeing so far is free. 
The last slide showed you how the measurement readings were synced and the process works the same for thermal images that you see here. So a customer took a thermal image of a motor on his mobile app, then that data was synced to the cloud, so he logged into the web app and he could see that same information on the web app. And because this is a thermal image, it also appeared in our third app, which is the desktop app. You'll see that these are the different images available to him, and this is the motor that he's seen also in the web app and the mobile app. The Fluke Connect desktop software was designed to be used primarily for thermal images, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. And here you're looking at the editor screen. So you can see that you're in the thermal editor screen. We happen to be looking at the file that's called IR underscore 2.is2, and we're on the optimized sub tab in the thermal image editor. Here we can change various settings for this particular thermal image. We can change the palette, the saturation, the emissivity, and the background temperature. Now this is all these are all settings that you selected on your thermal imager when you were out in the field taking an image of this particular motor, but they can be edited and modified to suit your needs using our free Fluke Connect desktop software. You can also change the level and the span to eliminate temperatures you do not want to include in the image. So you'll notice that we um, reduced our span so that all of the other information in the image basically disappears so that we can focus on just the motor and just the hottest parts of the motor. It's very cool and of course the, this desktop software is 100% free. So once you've edited your thermal images you'll want to create a report to show off to your boss or customer, right? Show off the information. Um, so here's what our reporting option looks like. On the left next to the number one you'll see the different areas of the report. So at the very beginning, we've got the title page where we can enter in our company logo, the customer's company logo, a summary of our findings. Um, you'll see that we've also got access to the different individual screenshots of the report. Um, in the middle is the preview of what the report will look like. So you have a thermal image here in the upper left-hand corner. And then on the right, upper right, we've got the visible light image. And below that, we've got image information and marker information. Next to the number two, you'll see that um, this is a list of all of the thermal images that are available in our report. And you can sort those by file name, or if you want to manually sort them, you can. You just click on an image, drag it above, if you want to place, place it before one of these other images, or click on an image and hold and then drag it below. Next to the number three, you'll see we've got measurement information. The options that you select here are the options that will appear in the report. So we've got name, visible light image, emissivity selected. So we've got the name of the image, a visible light image, which is up here in the upper right. We've got the emissivity, background temperature, so you can see emissivity, background temperature, etc. Now, in our case, maybe we know we want to add notes because we've included our observations on each one of these measurements, these thermal images. So we could select the checkbox here next to notes and that field would appear in our report. We might want to deselect some other information such as calibration range or image range because that might not be helpful for our end user. So we also have marker information, hot spot, cold spot, center point, center box, etc. Now that completes the Fluke Connect data flow walk through steps. So now I'll show another quick video to demonstrate how Fluke Connect works in action and then we'll move on to what Fluke Connect can do for you. Thank you. 
Ja se riittää. Mä voin tuoda sen sillä ensi ja sitten on tämän ensin itse asiassa images, notes, anything you want to share, will share by video. No one has to walk across the gate or drive into the office. Once I put you on vision to share, you can collaborate seamlessly and solve the problems faster than ever before. The point of progress in video is not simply to drop it. A lot of the good measurements, you can save measurements, patch notes with the touch of a button. Put the boards on the head for you. Just measure and move on. Assignments measurements to the specific equipment. Create a physical test measurement data that will help you make decisions and identify issues. Cloud storage is designed to ensure data privacy and security. Now, anyone who's given access can instantly access valuable historical data to help you handle your decisions faster. Plus, with trended graphs, you can instantly pull graph data and share file files. Help you to identify trends and quickly make important decisions. With the Blue Connect app, there's no more running and hiding. Everything you need to move forward, collaborate, and get the job done is found right where you want it, when you need it. The Blue Connect app. Save it. Save it. Share it. All the facts, right with you. So, you've just seen a high-level overview of Fluke Connect, a couple of videos of how it works in action, and some slides on how the Fluke Connect data flow works in the software. So, hopefully, you already have several ide ideas about what Fluke Connect can do for you. But if not, I have a few more slides to show, to show you what each of the Fluke Connect software tiers can do for you. Features and benefits. So, the Fluke Connect measurements, features, and benefits. Remember, the Fluke Connect measurements is the free tier of software. It's 100% free, works with 80 different tools in 11 different categories in over 73 different countries. The first feature is wireless one-step measurement capture. And how does this benefit you? Well, it helps you eliminate transcription errors, notebooks, and multiple spreadsheets. It helps you quickly and efficiently capture data. It helps you take live readings of energized circuits and operational equipment from a safe dis distance. The second feature is saving a measurement. Save measurements are securely stored in the cloud. That data is available 24-7 from any web-enabled device, so you always have access to your data. And that data helps you identify and diagnose problems more quickly and more confidently. And the third feature is sharing measurements. You can stay in contact with your team without leaving the field using the share live video chat like you saw in both of the videos. You can access your data anytime from any web enabled device and you can export data in CSV, Excel or JPEG formats via an email. So just like you saw in the last section, here are some screenshots of what the data from the T3000FC temperature module looks like in the mobile app and the web app. You've got the mobile app and the web app. You'll remember that the data is sent from the tool to the mobile app via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and then that data gets synced from the mobile device to the Fluke Connect Cloud, where it can be accessed from your web app. In some cases, um, for instance, with thermal images, that data is stored on the mobile app, then synced to the cloud where it's visible on the web app, and it's also available in the desktop app. Because remember, the desktop app is where we edit and create reports for our thermal images. Remember, this is all 100% free. So you have access to three different applications, the mobile, the web, and the desktop, access to 80 different tools, that can connect to this free software to capture data electronically for you. Next up is the Fluke Connect Assets tier. Now remember, this software comes with a one year free trial. So you've got a full year to play with this before you have to start paying for it. So if you have assets to manage, why not sign up for a Fluke Connect account, get access to your free asset trial. When I, and when I say free trial, you know, sometimes uh, 
companies will lock down some of the feature set. We do not. You get full access to all of the assets related features so it's just as if you were paying the 250 dollars annual subscription fee but you get it for free for an entire year so take advantage of that now the first feature you get with fluke connect assets is the ability to add edit and delete assets asset groups and asset subgroups so you can organize the your assets the way you want to you can organize them by plant by building, by type, by customer, whatever works for you. And you can also store asset data for more than one company. So many of the people I work with are vendors, are independent contractors that contract with multiple companies. And the flexibility of our asset management software enables you to create different asset groups to keep company data separate. So in our area, we've got some big companies that you may have heard of, Boeing, Amazon, Microsoft. If I were an electrical contractor and those were my three clients, I could go out to each one of those uh, customer sites, capture data, and save that data inside of an asset group I created specifically specifically for Boeing, specifically for Microsoft, et cetera. Now, the second feature is the ability to assign measurements to assets. So think of how great this would be to have all of your inspection data stored in one place and assigned to that asset. So you've got your 376 FC clamp meter readings, your T3000 FC temperature readings, all for the same asset, all in one spot. It's not stored in a notebook. It's all stored in the Fluke Connect cloud where you can access that data 24-7. And having a single view of all of the data will help you to identify and diagnose problems more quickly because you have a comprehensive overview. You'll also be able to track asset health over time. Think about, you know, you start taking measurements now, assigning that information to an asset. A year from now, you've got a year's worth of data to determine the health of an asset. The third feature is the ability to add, edit, and delete work orders. You can eliminate all of the paperwork and go completely digital. You can increase productivity by reducing mistakes and duplication of efforts. And you can get real-time tracking through regular updates during the process. See exactly when your technician arrives on site and starts work. See when they've completed the work order and marked it off as done or completed. You get that information as a manager or a team lead in the Fluke Connect uh, asset tier of software. I've got customers who use our Fluke Connect asset tier of software exclusively for the ability to manage their work orders. Um, they don't care about um, all the other stuff that we have available. They just want to be able to uh, create and assign work orders to technicians and then mark those work orders off as complete and use that information to charge some of their clients. So here are some screenshots of what the assets would look like in the mobile and the web app. So these are the apps assets in the asset tier software. Um, here in the mobile app, you can see we're looking at the plant one assets. So within the plant one asset group, we've got the boiler, the chiller, and the compressor. And what that looks like from the web app, you click on the asset tab here. You select the plant one asset group. And here you can see those same assets, boiler one, chiller one, compressor one, fan, motor. Now the color coding indicates the asset health. Green is good red is bad, orange and yellow are somewhere in between. So best practices here is to sit down at your computer and open up the web app, then start creating all of your assets and asset groups instead of trying to do that on the tiny phone. Um, now you can do that if you're out in the field and you've forgotten ahead of time to create your web assets or your assets on the web, but it's best to do that in the web app. Another best practice option is to import your assets using our Excel template. So if you've got a list of all of your assets in an Excel file already, you can just add those to an Excel template that we provide you and you can upload those assets and all the information related to them into our software. One of the most valuable parts of the Fluke Connect Assets tier is to be able to discern the health of your assets by tracking measurements over time. So let's, let's review a specific asset. So let's say we're going to look at plant one and we're going to dig deeper into the asset called motor. So we select plant one, we double click on the asset called motor and that will take us to this page. Now from here, if we click on the sub tab called save data, 
I can see every single one of the measurements that I've taken and assigned to the asset called motor. So I'm on the assets tab, I'm looking at the asset called motor, and every time I've selected a reading from any type of Fluke Connect enabled tool, there's 80 different options to choose from, I see that information stored here. So this is the T3000FC, this is the date and time I took that reading and what that reading was. Here's another T3000FC reading. I took a 376FC clamp meter reading. I took a 376FC, this is a log file. And I can see all that information about my motor in one spot. The other thing the software does is create charts for you under the analysis option. So if I move from the save data to the analysis option, and I've got, let's say I've got three thermal images of the same exact asset. It will plot the data from that asset on a graph for me and provide a carousel view so I can toggle between the different views of the thermal image um, for that asset. Now the same would be true of a T3000FC temperature reading, the same would be true for the 376FC clamp meter readings, etc. So maybe I started off the year, it's January, so it's a good time to start these maintenance plans. I take my T3000FC temperature or my T3000 temperature module and I go out and I take a reading. I do that for the next six months. Then on the analysis tab, I'll see a graph of all of those readings plotting a line. So I can determine if my asset's getting hotter over time, in which case it might be a problem. Now, one note, if you only have a single T3000 FC reading, a single point of data, then of course there's not enough data to create a graph yet, right? So it'll say uh, not enough data or some sort of message here on the analysis tab if you don't have any um, multiple readings. So you need to have at least two or more of the same type of reading. So two T3000 FC readings, two 376 FC readings, two thermal images, etc. More than one of the same type will create a graph for you. And here's what those graphs might look like. Now I have a lot less data than say six months worth of data, but you get the idea. The information here is to show you trends. So here's a, here's a trend, you know, this is going up. That's that's not good. This is a temperature reading, so that's probably not good. We may have done some repairs here at this point, and now it's coming back down again, which is good. Um, here we're, we're looking at amps for the asset called motor. Here we're looking at degrees Fahrenheit for the asset, asset called motor. And this information will help you more accurately determine the health of your asset. Now, once you've reviewed the data trends on the analysis tab, you can move over to the status tab. So we're still on the assets tab, looking at the motor asset, but now we're looking at the status. And here under asset history, next to the number three, you'll see that the status was good, which is why we had a green color. That was the date and timestamp of when it was good. But on this date, 1023 at 328, I decided to change the status from good to satisfactory. So I downgraded it from good to satisfactory. And the reason why I did that was because that asset, the motor asset is running hot. So it could be an issue, something we need to investigate. And you will be able to track every single change you make in the asset health status looking by reviewing the asset history. You'll notice the system, the software automatically date and time stamps this. This is my username, Riley Russell FC, and it noted the date and time I made the change. Think of how valuable this information might be to your manager or your customer. You've got cold hard facts about the health of their assets. Think of how much more valuable the information you can provide to them might be. The Fluke Connect Assets tier of software also includes work order management features. So we've moved from the Assets tab in the web application to the Work Orders tab. And at the very top next to the number one, right now we're looking at the All Work Orders view. But this will toggle over to My Work Orders. So oftentimes in the case of lead technicians, like in the video it was Larry, um, we might need to be managing the team, the whole entire team, in which case we need to see all work orders for the team. But in addition to that, we have our own responsibilities. So we have to go out and do our own work orders. So 
I could start my day by looking at all the work orders, figure out you know where the team's supposed to be, which people on the team are supposed to be doing what, Riley, Travis, et cetera. And then once I'm done with that, I can toggle over to my work orders to figure out where I'm going to be for the day. Next, we've got option number two, the filter option. Here, we've got two different ways to filter. We can filter by status, so status of the work order, whether it's closed, open, in progress or completed, or we can filter by priority, high, standard, and low. And here on this column, you can see what the different priorities look like. So um, green is low, red is high, yellow is standard. And finally, we've got this whole entire area here in the middle, the work, the work order details. We've got the work order number, the description of the work order, the type, signee, et cetera. And what's great is once you're in the software, you can click on the column header to sort the entire table by any one of these fields, like the priority field's a handy way to do a sort. But you may also want to sort by assignee to see, say, you know, what has Travis got on his plate today? Because he's a new guy, we need to kind of watch over him, make sure he's on track. Okay. Next up is the top tier or the fluke condition monitoring tier. We've got the features and benefits of the fluke condition monitoring tier. So. Now, unlike the lower two software tiers, this tier does include hardware in addition to the software and does require the purchase of either the 3540 FC power monitor or the 3502 FC, 3561 FC vibration gateway and sensors. And when you purchase the hardware, you'll get that first year of the software subscription for free, but after that, you will have to renew your software subscription every year. So the first feature is remote monitoring of asset data. This feature gives you always on monitoring of assets. So no more maintenance routes, just set up our remote monitoring equipment and view the data from anywhere in the world as long as you've got an internet connection. This improves safety because you can set up our equipment in dangerous areas or remote locations. You only have to do it once. And it also reduces labor costs by automating data collection. No more running routes, you set our equipment up and then monitor remotely. The second feature is graphs and historical data. So you've got trending of continuous data, which allows for monitoring over time. So you can see if the voltage is steadily going up as opposed to taking individual readings. You can use this information to identify the root cause faster by comparing measurements over time. And third, the third feature is sending alarms as push notifications when measurements go outside of a threshold. So if something goes wrong in the middle of the night, you can get an alarm notification so you can take action to prevent costly repairs or downtime. You can also specify who gets the alarm, whether it's just you or your entire team. Maybe I'm Charlie, the maintenance manager, and I want both Larry, the technician lead, and Jake, the technician, to get these alarm notifications so that um, one of them can run out to the factory and check in on the equipment. We've had a couple of customers report, of course, that um, this type of alarm notification has gone off in the middle of the night and they were able to you know, shut the systems down properly and avoid expensive repairs because they caught things in time. So here are some of the screenshots of what remote condition monitoring graphs would look like from the mobile app. These happen to be from our 3540 power monitor. You can see here we've got a, a graph view of the data next to the number one. Next to the number two, we've got alarms and alerts. Now the, di the difference is that you set up the alarms so you can say, hey, if my voltage goes over 112, I wanna be notified, that's an alarm. And then you've got system generated alerts such as, oh no, the 3540 has lost power. It has a backup power supply so it will run an additional four hours after the power's gone out to keep track of your equipment health. Um, and but it does send off a notification to you, a system notification. And next to the number three, we've got the actual raw data. So in addition to the graphical view, we've also got the actual numeric view. So here we've got some screenshots of what remote condition monitoring graphs look like from the web app. Very, very similar. We've got the graphical data, we've got the actual data. Um, then we've got two screenshots of how you can export session data. So you can select your frequency, 30 seconds, one minute, et cetera, 
choose the date range. So if you want to select maybe two or two or three days worth of data, um, you can and then set the time parameters as well. And you can export that information as an XLS file or a CSV file. And then you just enter your email address. And this is what that output's going to look like. So you've got the date, um, the measurement time, you know, the reading, etc. Now, this is the dashboard screen of someone that has Fluke Connect condition monitoring products. Here next to the number one, you can see the recent alarms that have gone off. So right now we've got four alarm states, and down below you can see um, what each one of those alarms was. So uh, this was the asset name that was affected, the asset type, it's a motor, and the severity of the issue, and when it happened. So I can double click on this to go in and view the actual condition monitoring graph for this particular asset in order to see what the alarm state was and determine whether it's something that needs to have some action taken, dispatch technician, or whether it's just something that should be monitored going forward. Next to the number two, we've got the facility asset health status. So you can see I've got a total of 13 assets. I've got one asset categorized as good. The bottom part of the chart got cut off. Several in the orange area, which is unsatisfactory. A few that are in the red area as well, which is unacceptable. So you can watch how this changes over time. Next, we've got the facility asset health trend. So these are different time ranges and you can see what generally will happen is you'll, you'll start with a lot of green good, and then over time, it'll get you know more and more yellow and orange and red as the equipment ages. But you can change that by making some maintenance or upgrades. So as you've just seen, the Fluke Connect software has different tiers available, and each level has an additional set of features that comes with it. But you can select the tier plan that fits your needs best. You've got Fluke Connect measurements, which enables you to connect to 80 different Fluke Connect enabled tools and works in 73 countries. It provides electronic data capture and data logging functionality from a safe distance. It also stores all the data in the cloud and is accessible 24 seven from any web enabled device. And of course, the best part is it's free. It's absolutely free. The next level up is Fluke Connect assets, which normally cost $250 per year but it's free for one year if you sign up now to try it out. This level includes all of the features available in the Fluke Connect measurements tier, plus asset management, the ability to track asset health over time, as well as work order management. And last but not least, we've got the Fluke Connect condition monitoring tier. This is also a paid subscription. This tier provides remote monitoring of assets, graph and historical data, and alarm notifications, and also includes all the features available in the assets tier and all the features available in the measurements tier. So if you're interested in what you've seen so far, why not go ahead and create your account today? Go to the App Store for iOS devices or go to the Google Play Store for Android devices. Search on the word Fluke Connect. It's very important you search on the word Fluke Connect and not Fluke Mobile because Fluke Mobile is a completely different app. That's not what we're talking about today. Um, simply click the install button and create an account using your email and password. It's important to note the email you select will be your Fluke Connect username. So if you've got a fun email that you use with your friends, you might wanna use choose to use one of your more professional uh, emails. Um, we don't care what the email is, but if you're using that information in front of your boss, you may want to choose one of your work email addresses. Um, then all you have to do after you set up your account is grab one of the 80 different Fluke Connect enabled tools and start capturing data and assign it to assets. Um, you can also use the web app to create your account. Go to fluconnect.com and create your account using your email address. So now you've seen an overview of Fluke Connect and how data flows through the various tools and software. Um, here are some Fluke Connect resources, other Fluke Connect resources that might be of interest to you. You can go to the Fluke Connect website by selecting fluke.com 
then go to products and then select Fluke Connect and that will give you some of the same information you've seen here today, features and benefits. If you want to watch some additional how-to videos, we create these videos every month. You might find some other information that's very interesting to you. You can go to fluke.com backslash quick start and select the fourth tile, which is called handheld tools. That is where we have all of the Fluke Connect workshop videos that we've recorded so far. If you're interested in learning more about our condition monitoring products, you could contact our sales department at this telephone number or this email address. They can schedule a demo for you. Or if you simply have how-to questions, I want to create, create an asset report. I want to create a thermal image report or um, I need help connecting my tool to the app. You can contact our Fluke Connect support technical support team. The phone number for them is 425-200-0080 or use our email address flukeconnectsupport at fluke.com. It's long but detailed and self-explanatory. And that concludes the presentation portion of the Fluke Connect workshop. In the next few days, you will all be receiving an email thanking you for attending, and it will include a link to the recording of this presentation and a link to register for the next Fluke Connect workshop in February. Also, at the conclusion of this presentation, there's a short survey that you, you can provide feedback on the presentation. We do review all of the scores and all of your comments. And if you have any ideas about future workshops that you'd like to see, please throw those in there. We'd be interested in hearing that. I will be taking questions now. Give me one moment to stop the recording. <laughs>